Hey guys, welcome to another video. How's it going? I'm so excited about this one. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to find a project for your portfolio. Now, without fail, in every single Q&A session, I always get this question. And I get it, it's hard to figure out what project you should work on. It's almost daunting when you have that blank slate and trying to figure out what you should actually do. What's the best bang for your buck? How, if you don't have that much time, what's the best use of that time, right? I completely get it and I've totally been there. I've realized over the past couple of years that I've consistently been using this framework to help me not only pick projects, but figure out how to showcase a project, right? And I mean, I don't want to keep it to myself, right? So what I want to do in this video is kind of share that process and that framework to help you guys uh, build projects on your own or build projects for your portfolio. Uh, before we dive in, obviously I'm going to highlight, if you haven't already, please subscribe. I've been having a blast. All the feedback that you guys have been giving me has been just amazing. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. If you like this video and any other video, please like. And lastly, I'm gonna be putting out so much more content with whether it's uh, LinkedIn resume reviews, tutorial, tutorials, or other kind of um, educational content like this video. So don't miss it. Um, click that um, notification icon so that you're always up to date and can uh, kind of catch that next video. So let's dive in. First, I'm gonna just highlight what the framework is and each of the steps there. And then like most of these videos, I'll dive into each and every one and actually showcase how you actually put it into action. Um, so you have something a little more tangible um, when you're kind of done with this video. Um, cool, so here's the actual framework or the four kind of things I touch upon when I'm um, contemplating what project to work on and how to showcase it. First is find a topic that you want to work on, right? I think it's self-explanatory, but you'll be surprised if people don't think to look there first. So look at your interests, figure out what type of topic would be really interesting to you. Next is find a potential algorithm that you want to work on. Look, step one and two could potentially go kind of in opposite order. You might already have an algorithm in mind and might want to go uh, just kind of start there and then find a topic, that's completely fine. Both of these are completely interchangeable. Just uh, like I said, like they should just come first, just one or the other. Third is do your research. I think that's after you've received, or not received, after you have a topic and an algorithm in mind, start doing your research, read, figure out potential problems that you could work on, um, potential kind of, uh, post and kind of inspiration that you could work off of. That's really important and I don't think happens really enough. And lastly is showcase your results. And I know that's not really the topic of this video, but I can't stress it enough. Showcasing your video is absolutely critical. So I'm going to highlight kind of how I'll go about doing that and some ideas for you guys. Kind of with that in mind, let's hop into the first step, right? And that is finding or establishing a topic that you want to work on, right? And you know what, let's just tackle the first two all together. The topic you want to work on and the algorithm that you want to focus on, because it's, like I said, they're go hand in hand and usually those two kind of get tackled at the same time. Um, with that, I think I'm going to move into Kaggle and show you how I would actually go about doing that, um, actually just leveraging Kaggle. I think like I said, it's such a great tool. It's a one-stop shop to help you build ideas and uh, find inspiration for your next project. So let's, let's hop in. All right, so you see we're on Kaggle right now, right? So this is literally when you first enter what you see here. It, like I said, this is gonna seem really simple, but I hope that's the case because it's so simple to leverage this to come up with your next big idea for your uh, portfolio. And uh, I hope this stresses that fact. So let's honestly just search right away, right? So let's imagine you see, obviously have a big interest in um, soccer, right? And what's cool is you see what people have been searching, you see what's popular. This is all really helpful for you to kind of potentially spark interest or um, potentially give you an idea that you didn't even, even know you wanted to pursue. but. In our case, let's just highlight soccer, right? So I'm a big soccer fan and I want my next project to be in um, that space. 
I think this will all pretty make sense to you guys, right? You guys are super smart, but let's just start breaking down what you see here, right? So if you want to kind of filter based off of a specific type of content, you could do that up here. So if you're just looking for data sets, which I'm sure you're gonna leverage, you could just click data sets here. If you wanna look at someone's project within the space of soccer, you could look at notebooks. And I think that's gonna be super useful too. We'll touch upon that. Um, you can look at competitions within soccer and so I think, I don't think we'll be working on comp competitions yet, but let's just focus on uh, building your first project. Um, okay, so let's just start scrolling around and let's kind of look at data sets. So now would you see like what kind of data could I even work with, right? So I'm really interested in soccer. Does, is there even data that's worth kind of pursuing this topic, right? And that's kind of the first thing you want to ask yourself. Um, right off the bat, yes. I <laughs> think the answer to that is yes. There's such kind of rich data here that I could definitely leverage. Um, while you're looking at this, a couple tips. So this is just like almost like Reddit, but if you see a bunch of upvotes, that's super important, right? Like, like I said, this one has 3,000 upvotes. I honestly think this is probably a really good data set. And I'll start here. I know a lot about European soccer. It's one of my favorites. So this is probably a good data set for me. Um, so you could save it or kind of just just keep this in mind. But at this point, let's, let's think about that framework again, right? At this point, I've thought about a topic, soccer, and now I have a data set to kind of work with, right? So I'm really building momentum, right? This is what you want to do, right? I'm building momentum and I'm kind of getting closer to that actual use case that I might leverage. So let's pause real quick, right? So I have a data set. Let's pause real quick and start thinking about that second step, which is the algorithm, right? Now, you may think, or you might be asking, Mava, like, I don't know what to work on, or I don't know what like algorithms are out there to work on with this data set. I kind of clueless in this, not clueless, sorry, I'm not going to say that. I am, um, like I said, just not sure what to work on or what algorithm to work with. That's completely fine. We'll touch upon that in a second. But if you do have one in mind, that works too, right? So imagine you know you want to work on something with classifications or you want to build a segmentation or a regression model. That That's really good, right? And that's kind of the aim of step two, figure out what you want to showcase and what you want to explore further. Um, let's pretend in this case, I want to work on classification model. Um, so let's kind of just dive in here. Let's just briefly look at the data, right? So, so we, like, we're just looking at the player attributes. Let's just look at the columns. I think that'll be easier though. It's player ID, there's overall rating, potential, preferred foot, attacking, work rate, crossing. Cool. So I know for this case, I want to work on a classification model and that's a good step, but, and I have all this data. Now is your, what I would do is just put, put together a spreadsheet and just put together a bunch of ideas that you could potentially work on, right? And if you have them, that's great. So let's see, a classification model with this data. I wanna, I could potentially predict based off of player attributes, what team do they belong on, right? That could be pretty complex, right? So that's one option, right? Um, I could also think based off these player attributes, this is the position I think they would work on, right? So you see where I'm going, right? That's, this is just, like, like I said, just an easy way to keep building momentum is for coming up with ideas that you might like. So just keep kind of throwing ideas at the wall. That's so important. Um, if, so this is going back to the case where you don't know what algorithm to work on, or you don't know kind of, you're still kind of unsure, go to this notebook section and just take a look at some of these uh, notebooks. Let's take a look at notebooks here. Let's, um, instead of using hotness, we'll click most, most votes, right? I hope it's um, just a useful tip to see what people are referencing quite a bit. Um, this is just data an analysis. Um, okay, here's a classification model that I could potentially leverage. Um, what this guy did is predicted the outcome of a match. Does it, who wins a win, draw, loss for a certain team? Look at that. I. Let's kind of to recap, right? At this point, I've leveraged Kaggle to search a topic I'm interested in, find the data set that can 
um, fuel that project and found a potential project that I could work off of. So if there's some reason where, okay, you know what, like it's kind of tough for me to build my own project from scratch, which I'm gonna suggest you do that, but if that's tough, you can easily leverage this person's work and pivot it to your own use case or change it a bit so that um, you've kind of learned something new or you've um, experimented in a way that's different than what this guy has done, right? So I'm not kidding that Kaggle is just a one-stop shop because like I said, it's, it has just given you everything you need um, to get off the ground. So if you want to do that, that's completely fine. This notebook session section is a great resource. Um, but like I said, I honestly recommend just coming up with a ton of ideas. So like, let's see what this says. Team lineup, call formation, betting odds, um, time of possession. So these are just a bunch of useful kind of details, right? Like. Let's see what else. You could also do something like a player who's likely to get traded. Like how likely is a player to get traded at the end of that year, right? Like, I think you get what I'm going, right? I feel like I'm just <laughs> beating a dead horse, but you get how I'm able to just search and take a couple steps and just looking at this data, it's starting to fuel a bunch of ideas that I could potentially work on, right? And I'm gonna go and do like Netflix, right? And just show you another example, just to keep the momentum going. So I'm gonna short by relevancy. Okay, so this has, let's see if there's any ones that seem interesting. Okay, this has 400 Netflix Prime Video to Disney Plus. Let's see what this data shows. Streaming platform, IMDb rating, target age of movies. Let's just look at this. Columns, movie ID, IMDb rating, raw tomato score. Okay, boom. So this is like a pretty simple data set, right? I can't do too much, but I have the IMDb rating. So potentially I could build a recommendation engine um, just based off of kind of IMDb. Like I said, like, this probably isn't great, but you see the same thought process, right? Like, oh, I'm looking at the data and based off of data, let me just, here's a potential use case that I could come up with, right? Um, yeah, so I think I'll stop there and just highlight kind of another way you could explore if you don't want to use Kaggle. So I, I'm keeping this as simple, right? I'm not doing any kind of magic, right? I'm just kind of showcasing the simplest way to explore. So let's, I just searched soccer classification model, um, classification football player position prediction, player position prediction. Creating a model of predict player prediction based off physical attributes. Look at that, right? You can go through this and you'll get some inspiration as well. And then you can work off it as, as you see fit. So at this point, I feel like we've truly exhausted those first two steps. We've leveraged Kaggle and Google to come up with really interesting use cases within topics that you really are interested in. You've also found data sets that can help you get off the ground and start exploring and seeing which use cases are worth exploring or pursuing, right? And that's, in my opinion, 80% of the battle. I feel like you're really close to getting something worthwhile to put onto your, um, onto your resume or your GitHub, etc. Now it's kind of that step three where you're kind of just diving into the Jupyter Notebook, exploring, experimenting, doing really fun stuff that um, makes us all data scientists, right? Um, before I do move forward and talk about kind of the last step, I wanna mention that even if the results aren't perfect, right? Even if you realize, oh man, like I'm only getting a precision recall of 0 .5, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 respectively, right? Like, even if that's happening, don't get discouraged, right? I really encourage you to push through and still showcase whatever you've done. Um, I think people kind of get really discouraged and feel like, oh, I'm just gonna toss this project and just move on and feel like what they've done isn't valuable and that couldn't be more wrong. All the steps you've taken, the EDA, the feature engineering, the model tuning, etc., all of that 
are a lesson learned that you should be showcasing, right? Highlight what went right, what went wrong, right? Highlight how you went about feature engineering. Your thought process and what you put into a project is just as important as the end result. And as someone who looks at resumes quite often and looks at candidates quite often, I think that's just as impressive as a project that had impeccable results. So don't get discouraged, push through and make sure you're kind of um, highlighting any portion, any part of the work that you're kind of doing, right? All that's important. Now with that little monologue and spiel out of the way, let's hop into the last step, which is showcasing your results. So at this point, technically you've gotten everything you need. You've gotten your data set, your use cases, your um, started building your model, but a lot of people leave it there and I'm gonna encourage you guys to not do that, right? It is so important for you to showcase your results in a meaningful way because look, I'm gonna be very candid. A lot of recruiters aren't that technical. If you're just putting stuff out on your GitHub page, that's just not enough, right? You wanna put things in a way that's easy to process and digest so that anyone, regardless of their technical ability, can enjoy your work, right? Um, I can't stress that enough because you want recruiters to get excited about the work you've done and not just look at the buzzwords that are on your profile, right? So, like I said, there's so many ways to go about doing this. You can put together a website that exposes a model that you've built. Um, you could put together a Medium article, which is probably my favorite. Um, or you could put together a YouTube video where you kind of showcase kind of your process and whatnot, right? All of these are great options to showcase your results and all of them, sh like at least one of them should be taken um, when you're about to wrap up a project. And this is something I do as well. I'll show you a, a project that I kind of showcase on Medium and just give you some insight into how I go about doing this. This is a Medium article I've put together. Um, see if this actually shows up. So this is something I put together. Um, I was really curious about text summarization. So yeah, like I wrote this whole thing where I compare various text summarization techniques and um, so on and so forth, right? Like this, like I said, all of these upvotes, I didn't even expect to get this much. It's not that much, but I didn't expect to get this much. So. All of this just, I was just that much more impressive because look, this is, this article did so many things. One, it got some attention on LinkedIn, on Medium, kind of gave me more attention in front of recruiters. But if you're a recruiter looking at this, it just highlights not only my ability to do kind of work on technical problems, but also highlights my communication skills, my ability to uh, leverage visualizations, all of the above, right? So don't, it's, it like I said, I, I'm like lost for words, but I see this so often, 90% of times I see people just, they don't go the extra mile. And I honestly think you're just limiting, you're limiting that project's ability to kind of work for you um, and give you the intention in front of recruiters, right? So like I said, make sure you keep things like this in mind so that you're, like I said, going the extra mile and making your projects kind of look that much better. Um, that's kind of all I had. And I hope this was helpful for you. I'm, this is not an exaggeration. I use this framework and this process whenever I'm coming up with any new idea. Um, you guys probably have seen my video with the Spotify recommendation engine. I kid you not. I use this exact framework to come up with that project and that kind of thing for my portfolio. And it's just using this really simple four step process, right? So I can't, it's, it's, I can't kind of uh, emphasize enough how useful this can be. And I hope this ends up being very useful to you. Um, with that, I think I'll kind of wrap up. If you guys did like this video, drop a comment, let me know what you thought. Um, definitely like, subscribe, and like I said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, see you guys.